Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to yet another episode of Up Level Together. We're so excited to continue to tune in, and thank you so much for all the wonderful messages that you send us weekly about our masterful guests, and today is no exception. I'm very excited today. I'm talking to someone that I have really admired from afar for quite quite a while and today not only do I get to talk to her I get to be in her energy and her space and you know how much we care about energy Mm. here at up level so really quickly I'm going to introduce her and then we're going to get get going Katie Burke is a serial entrepreneur with a 20-year proven record um, of driving consistent revenue growth in both for-profit and non-profit organizations a brilliant strategic visionary. She uses her outstanding ability and extensive network to grow relationships and broaden networks and opportunities with new and existing partners. She is a founder, a brilliant founder um, of professional women's organization, Team Women, and that's committed to developing future generations of women in leadership. Current membership includes 660 women from the C-suite to young professionals who work in a variety of key industries, including business, corporate, sports, and civic organizations. And they make meaningful connections and rise together through 40 leadership development events, mentoring, and youth empowerment. My dear goodness, Katie, welcome. Thank you, Yasna. So good to have you. I'm so happy to be here. You know, you and I have been going around in circles for quite some time, and I often find that I just want to meet all the wonderful people, and I don't have the time. And, right. I'm in the season when I'm not networking a lot, actually, at all. So yeah. when people fall into my lap, and there's an actual connection that requires time and, and, and a connection, yeah. I take that very seriously. Yeah, I do, too, because we life is such a fast pace. And we're juggling so many things all the time. So I am honored and um, humbled to be in your presence and oh, to be here. Honestly. I love you. I do. <laughs> Not many people say humble. I am. <laughs> I've seen you. I mean, some. I think I first met you back in 2011 or 2012 when you were speaking at a risk manage, management association. Gosh, I remember that. I was pregnant. Oh, I think Remember? you were. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, I think yeah. I was six months pregnant with my first man. Yeah. I was a different person back then. Time fly. Well, you were still fantastic. You were always fantastic <laughs> then and now. So thank you yeah. so much. I We're going to have a really uh, fascinating conversation. I love talking to people who really understand the intricacies of the positions that they're in, but you have been in multiple. You are Mm -hmm. a natural born leader Mm -hmm. and you have this wisdom and a charisma that everyone who meets you makes a reference to. So I'm excited to talk about that too. Yeah, Yeah, I've been talking about you around town. Yeah, (laughs) doing some interviews. (laughs) So tell me a little bit about Team Women and and, um, just kind of your journey on on becoming a leader of such a fascinating uh, uh, um, organization. What attracted you to it? And just the current role and the vision that you see for, for the organization. Okay, sure. I I love it because it's my passion. Um, actually, I was not the founder. I was I joined the board in 2015 of Team Women. It had been um, launched in 2012 by a group of fabulous women leaders that had been recognized at the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal Women in Honor in, uh, in Women Honorees, and um, that was an event. And from that, they they got together because the message was so strongly delivered by um, one of the, the keynote speaker, Pam Borton, who is the University of Minnesota women's collegiate basketball coach. And she was a keynote speaker at that luncheon, and the women honorees that were recognized loved her message of that women need to inspire one another more, support one another more, and uh, advocate for em- each other, that they said, let's get to together and do something with this. And that's how Team Women, the organization that I now lead, it was born. So um, back, jump into 2015, I joined the, um, the board of directors. And uh, I just w- am passionate about our mission. Our mission is we inspire women and girls to rise together. And I was fortunate enough to um, 
be invited to serve as the executive director when our executive director left back at the end of 2016. So I've been in that role since uh, ever since. I love where I'm going to. This is a perfect um, feed. I also th um, think about when you literally feed me my next question. This is <laughs> where we're jiving over yeah. here. Um, Minneapolis Business Journal. Yeah. Uh, wrote about you. They said, since Burke became executive director in 2016, I quote, <laughs> membership has more than doubled mm -hmm. to 550, mm -hmm. and that was at the time, and revenue has gone up 81%. Mm -hmm. That's really incredible to me. And I'm really curious, when you take on a, a leadership role at such an organization, you knew the vision because you were already involved with with mm -hmm. the members and you were clearly um you had a buy-in but what key strategies did you use or what was your vision to have such a remarkable growth of the company and mind i say visibility in the community mm. well when you land in the perfect role for your career and you're able to use every tool in your toolkit that you've developed over the course of your career, it, it just happens, I think. So I, first of all, A, I loved the mission. Mm -hmm. And the mission speaks volumes to organizations and the members and the community. You know, we, at the time, this was 2016 when I was newly in this role. Um, you know, women's, the women's conversation was gaining momentum, if mm -hmm. you, and uh, so it was a good conversation to have. Second, um, my background is entertainment. We do events and uh, we do leadership development events because what we know is women are members of Team Women because they want to be inspired, they want to learn something, and they want to expand their network. And those are all three, three things that I love that you can, you know, bottle up and put in a really cool event. So that was one of the first things I did was, you know, connect with wonderful C-suite speakers through our community of the organization and bring them in and, and invite uh, different personalities to interview them. And uh, those gain momentum, too, because each time that's a, that's a strategy for growth. Because each time you have different people in your orbit that you that you allow to have um, members of your community to gain access to, it naturally spreads, right? So, so that was one way. The other way was just partnerships with corporate sponsors and community partners. So I love relationships. I'm curious about people like you are, and it's easy for me to have conversations and to get people excited and. Fortunately, if they are in alignment with what we're doing and our goal to mentor women and develop strong leaders so that we can um, create environments and experiences for women to feel safe and supported, uh, then just together we can move mountains. And that's usually what happens. I love that. Yeah. I love that. You know, there's a lot of women yeah. who are in your ideal sweet spot who are really interested in um, why should they consider uh, you know who or rather what's a better question who's a better fit who's a good fit for team women um, that's a great question we're so diverse in our membership in terms of age we're multi-generational industry from financial services legal education government military nonprofit I mean we serve all industries um, to culture um, we really embrace different cultures and try to meet people where they they are where they are mm -hmm. um, and support them personally and professionally. So if you are in a time of life where you're which many women are right now, I mean, we are coming out of covid where everybody is talking about living a life with purpose oh. and living a life with passion. So but how do you do that? Well, you have complete permission right now, different than when I was growing up and it was, you know, like it was kind of linear path, you know? So this is, now it's it's really embraced and people are looking to follow their dreams and live in their, their purpose and, and passion. And so, but sometimes you need to know those people that are doing it and be inspired by others in a community to help you take that next level. So we're all about creating space for you to gain inner confidence, 
so you can take a leap forward in your life. That's a phenomenal, if there ever was a good sales pitch, that was it, oh. ladies and gentlemen. But in, I think the way you talk about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm only half joking, it's a beautiful value proposition. Yep. It comes so natural and organic that it's women feel attracted to your mission. They yep. feel invited. They feel like, you know, I'm, and I'm referencing this in terms of the, you know, the sales pitches today on the, on the Internet that, are, that can be so sleazy. There is, I think you create such an environment and a promise for women who are going to come to be embraced mm -hmm. and who are really going to find a place, I think, of community, which is what we have really been wanting to see and find after 2020. Have you noticed that, um, or have you heard back that after 2020, that people are wanting to do more in person? Um, or are people withdrawing more? I've heard both things. Yeah. People don't want to go to work full time. Yep but they still crave that interaction with, with, with people. I, I'm curious what you have found. Yeah. Well, you know, on the, on the work side, you know, the, obviously corporations are embracing the flexible work schedule, you know, and, and work from home, work remotely, and then also come into the office. And now it looks like more people are going back into the office. What I know about women right now is definitely priorities have shifted. Time is a coveted commodity. Where they elect to spend their time is a big decision. And so yet they're, they're, it's not the same in terms of like everybody is making decisions to just be all over the place all the time. They're really safeguarding time where they spend their time. And uh, but there are plenty of women that want that community and want that sp support and want that safe space. And for those that are looking for that, that's exactly who what you're going to find at Team Women. You mentioned a culture of belonging. That's of paramount importance to all of us at Team Women, and not just me. Every board member, every co young professional advisory board member, every committee member, like that's our whole goal because whoever wants to feel on the outside, you know, you want to come to a place that you feel welcome and heard and and uh, can be a part of something bigger than yourself. That's so beautifully said. When I introduced you, I referenced you as, as this brilliant leader in our community. And I really um, mean that when I think of you, that's what I think of. But I'm curious, how do you define a leader, um, and in particular, a woman leader in today's world? You know, I've thought about that a lot because I think of, I, I don't necessarily, I think of a leader as, a, a you know, somebody that is um, collaborative, somebody that um, is a great listener, somebody that's a good communicator, somebody that can inspire, somebody that can move the needle forward um, in a direction that, that you know, that the community that they're serving agrees with. So um, it's kind of all encompassing. You want to, to jump on the bandwagon of a leader, right? Um, because you feel a part of something bigger than yourself. You're the captain of the team, you mm -hmm. know? And so that for, you know, I've had great women leaders in my, you know, career and that ha have gone before me that I look up to and I've had great male leaders in a, a ton. And so I don't, I think just a leader is not necessarily gender specific mm -hmm. because it's who the heart of the person is, you know, and, um, and, and, but I also think that they're very goal oriented as well, you know, and, um, I mean, I know for me, that's, it's like, give me a call, pickleball, it could be. <laughs> Funny side note, last week I'm playing pickleball and Katie walks in. I'm like, Katie, and then we're the two loudest people. On the <laughs> exactly. It <laughs> was fun. We it had, was we really fun. And we'll bring Ian to produce yeah. the, <laughs> the whole session. Yeah. I love that. Well, going back, th th that really is, it's about the feeling, right? It is, it's about yeah. the feeling of the person. You're so right. It's gender neutral. Mm -hmm. But speaking particularly of the women, one mm -hmm. of the things um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts that, that I've noticed in talking to women 
we've had an era of Sheryl Sandberg lean mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. go as hard as you can, go into the C-suite, be, be powerful, make the money. And I'm now on the other side talking mm -hmm. to a lot of women. Women come to me and say, I've done all of that. Yep. I'm sick of it. I'm burning out. I want to be at my kids' soccer yep. game. I want to um, cook a little bit more. I don't want to be gone and traveling so much. Yeah. So m m it might be a biased perspective because that, yeah. th that's the clientele that seeks me out. I'm curious if you're finding out if women really still want or have the same eagerness towards mm -hmm. a traditional norms of success or leadership, mm -hmm. C-suite, leading mm -hmm. the companies, or are you also sensing that women are saying, wait a minute, I bought into this and I'm not sure I want in. Yep. Again, out of COVID, because one of the things that we do at Team Women is we have power luncheons. So I've used this example a lot. You know, uh, power luncheons is where we bring in C-suite leaders to share their inspirational story. Well, during the time of the last two years in the pandemic and when we couldn't get out much, the last thing people, other women I found wanted to hear was somebody else's success story. They didn't, they wanted to be in a room of supportive women that were like trying to find, navigate, I'm caring for my elder parents, I'm caring for my little kids. I, I want to do, I want to create the life that I want now. I don't want, you know, and, and I want to be okay about that. So I think it's a, it's really an individual um, question per person. Do you, you know, because everybody's different and gender neutral, you know, what type, what path do you want forward? And there are, and I think there was a lot of people that wanted permission, especially women, permission to say it's okay to take a time out from the workforce right now. So I can, because I had to for whatever reason, you know, um, and, um, and, and now I'm assessing what I want to do differently with my life. So. I, I love that. I want, I want to, I want to go there. Um, a little bit of a loaded question for me, something that I have been thinking about. Both you and I are clearly driven, and, mm -hmm. and obviously now I know very competitive in pickleball too. But very often I feel like I have inhaled this, um, th this idea of success mm -hmm. and grind, and I feel like there is an incredible difference in how I get fulfillment versus my husband. So this is mm -hmm. a gross overgeneralization of the sexes. But I found even in working with my male clients, they feel most, for most part, very most happy and fulfilled when they're providing and creating and leading. Mm -hmm. Yet I feel like I need a lot more nurturing and downtime. And I'm curious, your, do you think that there is this innate nature of of a f you know men versus women and how how the profound need for what how we, what we need to see be seen valued and, and fulfilled i definitely think there's a difference between men and women and what they need and how they get it and number one just in confidence Right. I mean, so women, there's it's a fact that women can see a, a job opportunity and, you know, make a decision not to throw their hat in the ring because they don't meet one of the 20 criteria, you know, where a man can see it and go, I could run this company, you know. <laughs> However, that being said, I feel that, too. I mm. I've always felt that. And and I'm so far from that. Right. But. It, it, so I re that's why I struggle with the, with the gender a little bit because I was raised in a family that supported me no matter what. Yeah, I feel like it goes back to you know where you came from and 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 your own personal values and attributes and characteristics. So so it's really difficult for me to answer those gender type of questions because okay. I was raised really differently. Yeah. I, and I, but I also can tell you because I'm in the world of professional, de of, of women leaders all the time and I see them all the time that, you know, there is a fellowship, there's a collaboration, there's a, you know, there's a support. There can be all of that. And I can also see that, you know, a men can have the same 
as well too so yeah no you're you're right I feel I was very lucky when the kids were little mm -hmm. to be able to um, to have the flexibility in the business to stay home and attend to those needs but I often wonder women who have to have small kids and have oh. to lead at such a level yeah the pressures and I often wonder if the trade-off is worth it so that's why I was asking like when in yep. those early stages, like even now, I feel like I have a lot more energy and drive. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. To do things in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't playing pickleball 10 years ago. No, I wasn't right. playing anything 10 no. years ago. And, and it's an interesting, it's just an interesting conversation to, to be having because a lot of the, um, and again, maybe this is why people come to me. They're feeling like they want a reversal of everything that they have built. Yeah. And I find it fascinating. I'm like a detective. I want to go in more and explore because I think that there's a balance. We can still create yep. and lead. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be in a... All or nothing. All or nothing Yeah, way. exactly. That also could be age and experience. I mean... <laughs> I get Are to, you saying I'm old? No, I'm saying I'm old. You know, I mean, honestly, because things that bothered me when I was in my 40s just don't anymore, mm. right? And I had that huge drive to be, the drive that I had then and the goals that I had then are much different now because what I do know is everything always works out. Say that again. Everything always works out. And it might not work out the way you intended or thought or wanted, but it always does. And um, and 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 I just have that belief. And so, I think for everyone in their you know twenties, thirties, and forties, they should really listen to this message because we get so hard on ourselves. We do, yeah, so and, much. And and also too, back to the 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 you know the women with young children. I don't know how they do it, and we certainly have a huge amount of young professionals within our, our organization, and I tell them all the time, you are amazing, you know, because you've got, you know, somebody that's sick and another person. I mean, they're doing all the juggling and still having a great career, but they're doing it, and what they're doing is taking time out for themselves to be a part of a community with like-minded women mm -hmm. that can give them that reprieve from life and help them make different decisions, whatever that might be for them, mm -hmm. differently. I mean, we have a really strong mentor program at our organization, too, where we pair mentors and mentees together mm -hmm. to get that, uh, you know, just have somebody riding shotgun with you on that journey of life, you know? I like that. That was, I was going to ask you about that. You know, you serve such a diverse population and mm -hmm. there's women who um, have, have the wisdom. They've gone, they've done the child rearing, they've done yep. the, the pleasing and all of those things. And then there's younger women who are maybe feeling a little bit more unsettled in their careers or yeah. unclear. How would you find the balance between giving both of those groups yeah. everything that they want when yeah. they come and then the benefits of that of that um cross collaboration and the sharing of wisdom from both sides yeah well i we are hugely multi-generational you know so like our main population is 45 to 55 and then sh right after it's 35 to 45 but we have people from 20 to 80 mm. you know and, um, but what I found is regarding our programming, everybody's journey is different. So you might be in your 40s, 50s, and still feel like you're an emerging leader in your early 30s, because maybe you, maybe you change lanes mid-career. Maybe you, you decided in your corporate career after 20 years of being in this that, you know what, I want to go into nonprofit, or I want to... I want to go into financial services. I've seen a lot of, you know, that's a great trending industry for mm -hmm. women. And there's a growth opportunity there. And that's a hard opportunity to start in your 40s and 50s. But people are doing it. So at any time, our programming, you know, the, the, the goal of it is to create experiences where everybody will get something. So for example, we just did a an assessment event um, last month, and uh, it was on the saboteurs. What are the saboteurs of your in your 
um, psyche that are preventing you from getting to where you want to go. So, so that applies to everyone. Ageless, mm -hmm. right? Ageless. Mm -hmm. Okay, then Cor right before that, Corey Berry, the CEO of Best Buy, spoke at a power luncheon, and she talked about her career journey. Okay, again, ageless because you're talking about the span, what are the life lessons and career lessons that you're learning along the way that it something applies to everybody there. And so I think that, that our community, even if you're young, and we certainly have a lot of, you know, the 20-something um, young leaders that are trying to navigate, A, number one, find out what their career path looks like, mm. but then B, meet people that can get them to where they want to go, you know? So we provide that, and then we have the older generation that are looking to navigate maybe a new marketing, right? Social media, this podcast, you know, and who knows that? The younger generation. So we all always are getting to learn from each other. I, I love that in majority of the cultures, that exchange of space and energy that's multi-generational -gener happens a lot more than in our society, yeah, um, I feel like, yeah. more naturally. Yeah. There is no very often where I come from, um, the grandparents are living with, you know, with with the married or the rather you live with your parents and then yep. there's the children in the household, so three generations. Yeah. And there's a lot more mix and all over the, the world. I've noticed that. I yep. was just reading about Singapore mm -hmm. and how they're, um, I believe they're one of the blue zones as well. Mm -hmm. And how the government incentivizes people to have their parents live with them and oh it gives them extra dollars if that's the case. Yep. It's I I love that aspect too of just a multi coming. I mean, my boys still live with me, and I I wish they always would. You know, it's not. Nice. Yeah, I know. I keep thinking my boys will leave one day. I know. <laughs> Makes me sad already. I know. Um, you know, I'm going to do. Uh, you're you're so fascinating when you talk. You're so enigmatic, and it's <laughs> like there's a. I feel like when someone who has done so much yeah. and is so recognizing the community there is an ease with oh. which you speak and how wow. you show up it's really beautiful i'm gonna pull an oprah question okay um what do you know for sure oh my gosh i know uh i believe that there's a god mm. i mean it goes back to my faith that was the first thing that popped into my head you mm. know i believe in in that this is a blip and that we have life everlasting somewhere so that's that's my meaning this life on earth. Yeah. And how does that, I'm curious, how does that impact your everyday life? Don't sm sweat the small stuff, <laughs> you know, <laughs> conflict. I mean, you pick a topic, you know, I mean, mm. like anything that you could used to rattle me when I was younger, um, whether it be com competition, whether it be anything like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, I just pause, you know, I've got a lot of tools in the old tool belt and, um, and just take a minute to, to think about what's really important, what matters. Um, yeah, those are the, those are the big things. For women and men listening to this faith or no faith, right? what could you tell them that would, um, help them? in finding that inner peace and ease that you feel and with which you speak? Oh. I, acceptance, you know, read up about acceptance and, and um, it's, it's a, it's an inward journey, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I've had, it's constant self-reflection and who is it that you want to be and how do you want to show up and how do you want how do you want to treat others and how do you want to be treated and um so it just goes back to self always thinking about who is the person that you want to be um it, it's funny uh, very often in in the early decades of our lives we're so busy building and yeah. we're like busy worker ants, there is not a lot of time for self-reflection. Right. I feel like the older I get, the more peacefulness I get from the fact of, uh, that, you know, in mere few decades, 
Mm-hmm. A lot of things I'm talking about are going to be irrelevant, A, mm-hmm. or B. I'm not going to worry about this. Mm-hmm. So why sweat the small stuff mm-hmm. in the big scheme of things? Right? Yeah, that's totally true. But you, it, it's like you said, it's hard to know that when you're in it. And it's hard to bel- believe that and trust that when you're in it, meaning in the early parts of your life and in, in your early career. And so having a community around you constantly, be surrounding yourself. Do you know Dr. Verna at mm-hmm. all? Okay. I love her. Okay. The ad, she, that was one life-changing book, The Power of People, that I read mm-hmm. years ago, The Power of People, um, having – Uh, assessing the adders and subtractors in your life. You know, it's all about who you surround yourself with and um, that you can aspire to be or learn from or feel vulnerable enough to talk to. So so the adders, you know, you want more of the people around you that fill your cup and the subtractors, those that bring you down that you don't feel good, get rid of them. You know, Mm -hmm. that's as a leader, that's one thing I've done I'm quicker to pull the trigger. Like if there's something that's not working in a relationship or with a, you know, it doesn't take long to make an adjustment. Meaning, you know. Boy, is that um, a valuable advice for so many of us who sometimes drag on friendships or try to make them work. It just doesn't fit energetically or otherwise. Right. And I, I even think of the some relations that were, you know, downright toxic that I still continue to engage because... Yeah. For whatever reason, I thought I had to. Yeah. Well, here in Katie Burke just gives us all permission to just walk away from it all. Absolutely. And that's a very powerful advice, I think, when we're starting out. In, and the studies are so conclusive about who we surround ourselves with. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm so glad that you're in my circle. That's <laughs> them. Uh, aren't I lucky? <laughs> just until we get on the pickleball course. Well, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to crush you. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, if, if women um, in particular today who are um, trying to manage life and career and they mm-hmm. really want to have that level of success right now and they're rising the ranks and they don't feel very secure about themselves, mm. what advice would you give them? Are there some key attributes or things that they could work on to become more comfortable with themselves and really work through those ladders of of success yeah it's it's um there's a few things i've always done especially when i felt insecure it's preparation right it's a good one planning (laughs) practice okay those are three things say that again preparation planning and practice okay yeah in my role at um team women i didn't think about what all and it entailed and Public speaking was part of it, and and I am terrible. At, I mean, it's not in my sweet spot. Public, sp- I was scared to death when I first started my job. I had to speak a lot, and I would shake in the papers, and I have reading glasses, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is not. But it just, I just kept at it. I was persistent. You right? are natural now. Well, I just am more comfortable. Like I, you know, I just, I, I don't know if I'm a natural or not, but I'm just more comfortable and I'm okay just being myself too. So prepare. Prepare. Um, plan. Plan for what you're going to say. Um, practice. And then practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice. And then remember to build your confidence that you had those experiences. So those are in your back pocket. Mm. So next time you go into a meeting and maybe it's a board meeting, maybe it's with, um, you know, an unhappy client, maybe it's with something, just remember that you've got this. It's those self-affirmations and you can do it. I mean, you, honestly, we all can get what we want and uh but you need to be prepared and practice and feel confident and confidence is the key yeah and take the first step yeah take the first step so many people stop even before taking the first step because they talk themselves out of i can't and yep. again going back to that self-talk it is that you referenced 
and I, I have been always a risk taker. Like I do love to throw my hat in the ring and then I'm like, oh, what did I do? You know, and a lot, I do know that a lot of women aren't necessarily as, are, are more risk averse, you know, not to generalize, but you know, what's holding you back? Why not go for it? Right. I think, yeah. And my mom used to say, let it begin with me. And those were great. Yeah. So say that again and tell me why that made an impact on you. Because. She said, what did she say again? She said, let it begin with me. And it. And she was talking about some different things at the time. This was when my youth, you know, maybe like. But she said, just dare to be different. Dare to do, you know, so don't follow the pack. You don't have to follow somebody else just because. So you, you, whatever you choose, whatever path you choose to be on, let it begin with me. Oh, my gosh. That is such a fantastic piece of advice for everyone. And a total permi permission in a really standardized society that there is often feels like there is a prescription for success. Yeah. This is what you do. This right. is where you go. Yeah. Uh, this is how you network. They're like It's a traditional way of doing things yeah. that often feel clumsy and forced. Mm -hmm. Yet when, let us start with, like, what are you attracted to? What, what are the breadcrumbs? Where is the joy? Right. What are the unique aspects of who you are? Who you are? Yeah. You are a connector, though. Mm -hmm. like it's mm -hmm. a, such a, and that's, that's a natural born skill. That is. You. Yeah. So if you were to, let's say, start the team women mm -hmm. from ground up, let's yeah. say you were founding it and it didn't even exist, how would you go about and what are the things that you would do to get it to where it's at right now in the first few months? Who would you talk to? How would you approach the sponsors, the marketing, the promotion? Well, I'd start with the mission. Right. So what it is, the why behind the why, why is this organization in, in, in existence and who will I serve and what will the impact be? What, what are the results going to be? And then it would be creating experiences for me to realize those, the impact results for those that I'm serving. So that would be, it's all the plan, right? So it's a business plan going back to the planning doing little research, who's doing it, and um, you know, what, what are the competitors doing and what are they, how can I be uniquely different, the value proposition. And, uh, and then, you know, it takes one person to believe in you. I always say there's a lemming leader. Once you get the big one, then the rest will follow. Yep, and so I've, I've had to raise private equity. You just, you need one known name behind you and then the rest will usually follow that that helps build the momentum and the steam for the engine so you can keep going oh my gosh i just had an aha moment oh, for good. something that i'm working on this is so brilliant oh i'm so <laughs> excited this is why i love these conversations yes but that's a powerful advice not only because it does something in the aspect of the public opinion, it does something for you internally. It does. When you land the big one, so yep. to speak, when you have a success or whether it's a huge donation or sponsorship mm -hmm. or partnership, it changes the way you see yourself mm -hmm. and then you feel a little bit more maybe confident. A hundred percent. It's that experience in your back pocket. It's like, oh my gosh, I'll never forget that because I, when, when I, uh, you know, was new in my role, uh, we were three weeks before, we, we never had big sponsors, um, and we were three weeks before our leadership conference. And so I, I have been, you know, lucky to have a good network um, because I do love to connect with people. And I was thinking about somebody, and I thought, you know what, and he happened to be president of a bank, and I said to myself, self, it was a Sunday night. I'm going to write him a letter. I'm going to tell him what we're doing. And I'm going to see if he'd jump on board. And he, I, I shared that with him. And the next day, he wrote back and he said, Katie, this sounds like something we should be on board with. We're all in. And it was, you know, that was a big, big deal. 
So that was the confidence because I had not been an executive director before of a nonprofit. So this was new, you know. Um, I'd done other things, but you know, every every big career thing I've done has been kind of uniquely different, and uh, and so I always need a lot of confidence, <laughs> which doesn't come naturally for me. I'm, but you created. I created it, but I, I, it doesn't come natural. I mean, I, I, you know, I used to be afraid of my own shadow, you know. But look, th that's why I'm loving this conversation so much, is yeah. that you're giving permission yeah. to me, mm -hmm. to everyone listening, that with preparation, planning, and, and repetition, and actual doing it in practice, right. you, can, you can get that confidence. Yeah. And you can get whatever it is you want. That is, it's, I did not know that about you. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. Because when you look at you, it's like, oh my God, you know, Katie, she's amazing. She's a national born leader. She is one of the top leaders in our, in our community. And you, I think this is such a beautiful reminder for all of us who are feeling insecure at times. Yeah. Because I, we go in our, in our own head about it, it. My head is a dangerous place. <laughs> I always say the girls are having a pillow fight. <laughs> it's not it's not pretty. And so I have to I have to lean on, you know, what have I done what have I done? You know, because each time because I I it, part of it is an adrenaline junkie. You know, I'm like an I'm gonna go for everything and uh it, I'm not qualified. I mean, the world might not say I'm qualified or whatever, but I will find a way. And so and if I do or don't, that's okay. But the good news is, is that you just keep building on those one successes, like I said. So the, with my friend that was the banker that got on board, then we grew and grew, and we've had wonderful relationships with all sorts of, sorts of big organizations now that support us. And a lot, it's been from, you know, my parents used to say to me, baby, I can't give you a lot of money, but I can give you my connections. <laughs> And, and it's so true. And what do they say? Your network is your net worth? It is. And my mom used to say, you know, because she she also, she was a great connector. And she'd say if she had a client that was giving her a little issue, she'd have a quarter on the table and she'd push it over to the person and say, here's the quarter. You make the call. You know, so oh. like who's going to get, using the power of your, I could make one call and make it happen. So... Those are great things to know about myself, but that doesn't necessarily mean I believe them, too. You know what I mean? It just the confidence comes over time and just know that it's it's oh, we're always a work in progress. But you have to be around people that are going to continue to lift you up and support you. And that's basically what Team Women is, which is why I love it so much. I, I just absolutely am loving this conversation <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Is there a, a, you know, we're talking about very often about energy and manifestation. Is there a particular mindfulness practice besides your faith? Yeah. Because I think that's a form of mind, for mm -hmm. me at least, when I'm praying. Yeah. Th something that, that really allows you also to have that, I'm going to make it happen. I feel like when I'm rooted in my faith. Yeah. Um, and my faith, this connection with, with source that I that I feel in the early morning that I can't explain to anyone else. Yep. I have such certainty that it's going to be okay, mm -hmm. that peacefulness. Mm -hmm. Besides faith, is it something that gives you that knowing or that grounding? I have to, I have, to have just quiet, a little bit of quiet. You know, um, that helps me because I do tend to go, go, go. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, so if I if I run up against like I feel like I'm going going too much and I don't have white space, you know, that carving out time for white space, which is hard for entrepreneurs, right? Cuz we're on all the time even though I'm a leader of a nonprofit, it's an entrepreneurial mindset. It never stops. And I think again that's a that's who we are wired. We could be in the C-suite of a corporation. We could, you know, whatever the job is, it's who you are, and so having having some alone time um, to create, to think, is what helps me the most. Okay. Uh, what's next for you, and where can we find you? Oh, my gosh. Well, you can find me at Team Women, all things Team Women, <laughs> so teamwomenmn.org. 
We have all sorts of things coming up. We've got uh, a wonderful Empower Leadership Academy for Women, which is our curriculum that we deliver for youth, but it gives women the opportunity. To, it's some goal setting and things like that. But um, our leadership conference, which can I say? Yes. Yes, not you're speaking. Yes. Thank you ah. so much for inviting me. I feel so honored. Oh my gosh, you're gonna you I I just can't even wait. I it's can't wait. 650 people there that will be cheering I, you on. It's it's gonna be wonderful. So that's May 8th. So I hope you all registered there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking and sharing quite more way more about that. Yep. And then um, there's several things in between now and then, but they can link in with me or um, just connect with on our website too. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, I, I love that. We're going to link all of that information um, somewhere here, wherever you're watching, if you're watching it on YouTube or in the show credits um, or in the podcast, if you're listening to this. Katie, I am just, I knew this was going to be a fantastic <laughs> conversation. And you know, when you're in the moment and yep. it's the energy, like it was even better. Yeah. And the, <laughs> it's so, you. You set the tone. It is, but, but it's you and your brilliance. <laughs> I really can't thank you enough. I know you're very busy. And I feel like you're doing me such an honor by sharing the wisdom, by sharing the brilliance and advice with a lot of people out there who are really struggling today. So mm -hmm. I know that this is going to be very impactful. So thank you so much for coming. And it's a joy. Thank you. You are a, you. Joy. <laughs> you are a joy. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see, again, over and over, week in and week out, this is why we have these conversations and why we bring to you the most brilliant human beings who are doing the most incredible things. And they're doing them not because it, what's in it for them. They're doing it because they really feel uh, that there's a sense of... Um, being of service to the greater good and that when we do that we make the world a better place mm. for ourselves and for everyone else so thank you for tuning in and until next time just remember to grab one big win yeah that's right that's it that's <laughs> it <laughs> thank you all talk to you soon Thank you.